Let's continue our discussion about the Layouts menu. The next item on the Layouts menu is Part Setup. And again, we've covered this, but I want to make sure you have every detail about this dialog. So when you come in here, one of the things we haven't covered is you notice that you can rearrange your parts. Now, why would you want to do that? Because we have a set order here. Parts have to be in a special place, a specific spot. Well, think about it. If you had a subsummary part, you can have a trailing or leading subsummary. So you might want to take it from a leading and move it down below the body to make it a trailing. Same thing with a leading grand summary and a trailing grand summary. So those you can rearrange those parts that way. Notice that some parts are locked, like the header and footer. They have to be in that spot. They have no choice. Of course, you can go ahead and click on a part and change it. You can make all the changes you want, change it completely to a completely different part. You have a lot of options on here. These are really for printing mostly, so we're not going to cover them right now. So we'll hit Cancel. You can create a new part from here, as we saw. You can even delete a part. So make sure that when you delete a part, realize all the objects inside of it are going to go too. The next one we have is Set Tab Order. And this is really important. I usually recommend that people set the tab order once they're done with the whole solution, or at least very close to being done. Because you're often rearranging fields, and you'll have to do the tab order over and over again. So we're going to go show you how to do the Set Tab Order here. You just choose it. And the simplest way to deal with it is just to come in here and change it to whatever you want. Uh, you just go in here and change the number. But first notice what FileMaker has, 1, then 3, then 4. Why is it that way? Well, FileMaker tries to help you out by putting the tab order together. And when you start using uh, tab control objects, we have, uh, you know, it, it kind of messes up things. That's because what it does is it says, I'm going to go from top to bottom, left to right, and order the fields like that. And, and until you actually change the tab order, every time you move a field, it'll keep rearranging that tab order for you. As soon as you mess around with the set tab order and change it, it won't do that anymore. But right now, it sees that this is on top, this tab area here. The notes is the highest up next. And then comes the company. Then uh, then we got to find number four, which is this one. And then the shit company down here is five. So it's really not what we want. And it's not really a problem with FileMaker. It's just when you get a more complicated layout like this with the tab control, well, you have to really set it up yourself. And it's quite easy. You just come in here and say, I want this one to be number five. We'll type in a five. And it'll rearrange all the other ones for us. You'll see that now that other ones will get a six and a seven and so on. So the best way to do this is to just go through and renumber them. And I really don't want the tab to be in there. Uh, some people like it. I don't personally like it. Um, you can also put buttons in the tab order. I don't like that either. I just want to have the fields. That's all I want in there. So I'm going to go through here and number these. Put a 1 there, a 2, 3, 4, and so on. Just keep going down and reorder them exactly the way I want them to be. It takes a little bit of time. But your users will be very happy you did it so that it goes in a logical order. Then we'll go to shipping. Notice it's 15, 16, so that was ended at 12, so this must be the wrong one here. So we'll go ahead and put that one at the end, which would be 25. So we'll go ahead and type in 25 here. So if that looks good. And that looks good. So we have it all set up. Now, there are other options. Rather than do it manually like this, you can go ahead and change things like this. We can say add all the remaining objects. If I did that, what would happen is it would add this tab and any buttons that I might have had, and we haven't gone over buttons yet, but it would add them back in there. Or I could choose fields only and add all those. What would happen in that case if I would taken the most important fields and said, OK, I want all these fields in the tab order just this way, but the rest of them I don't care, it would add the rest of them in its order that it thought was best. And then again, the same thing with buttons only. Now we can also remove all fields from the tab or all buttons. I don't find this one very helpful, but this one might be helpful because I don't like buttons in the tab order. And then, of course, you can clear all of the objects. Everything's going to be cleared. Once you're done, just click OK. Go back to Browse Mode. We'll hit the Tab key. And notice it goes right through our fields in the order we want. But notice it cycles back through these ones here. You have to actually click over to Shipping, and then it'll tab through those. And then to Notes, like that. So. Let's go back into layout mode. And we'll take a look at some other features here. So we'll go up here to set rulers. And really, this is important for a couple of things. One is the units that you're displaying as the default for your rulers. 
and we haven't covered rulers and those are really most helpful when you're doing printed pages and things like that I haven't shown them yet but you can change what units you show either inches centimeters or pixels typically uh, you want inches for printed pages so you can tell where things are now you also have your grid spacing I usually show these in pixels that's because inches is not as accurate as pixels because grid spacing you're usually using for you know browse screens and on screen things and let me show you what that means grid spacing refers to this feature right here object grids we've turned it off so I'll turn it back on we'll go into our set rulers and we'll change this to something like 50 click OK draw ourselves a rectangle and then you'll notice that it can only go to every 50 pixels or so so that's really not that helpful and it looks like I drew a perfectly 50 pixel wide and tall rectangle so that was pretty good by myself and then uh, also you can duplicate and that will obey that grid also so if you duplicate that you'll see that it doesn't go six pixels down and six pixels to the right it goes 50 so I don't really usually mess with this I like the six pixels that's a good amount you know to offset it it's a good amount if you like to have the object grid which of course I don't like I've said that before I turn it off so we're gonna go in here and change it back to six and leave it on pixels again you can change these units in many different areas for instance you can go into your inspector and over here in position you can click right here and change it more easily so I don't often go into that area to change you know what your units are and what your dimensions are I usually do it through the interface um, in fact I'm gonna leave this on pixels because that's my preferred mode here for positioning objects which we'll go over later so let's go and look at the next item save layout and revert layout which are also available on the status toolbar so we'll draw ourselves a little line here and if we decide to save the layout which is done also by going back into browse mode but let's say we want to do it and not go back into browse mode just hit save layout or you could choose revert layout and that will give you a dialog and you need to make sure that you really want to revert you need to make sure you know when the last time you saved was the last time we saved was when we went to browse mode to check our tab order so if we hadn't gone to browse mode to check our tab order it would erase our tab orders also when we reverted so you need to make sure you're careful with that but we hit yes it's going to take that line out and we're all set to go so those are all your layouts menu items and you know you want to go back and fiddle around with these and check them out and try the features out because they're very important I mean that's why it's called the layouts menu it appears when you go to layout mode and you want to make sure you're very familiar know how to get to these objects you know these dialogues and menu items and things like that because it'll make your development much more efficient